Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! We're off to the pub now, the one in Burnley, where you'll recall we canvassed the immediate post-vote feelings pretty comprehensively. So, have they changed much? Will feuding friends forgive and forget? In a moment, Nick Blakemore will find out. But first, a quick reminder of how those Brexit campaigners reacted when they found out the result. I'm over the moon. I'm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Did it. Everybody woke up in time. Everybody listened. Everybody understands. Yes, it's going to be rough at the beginning, but we've done it. So, a week on, how are they feeling? And just to warn you, you may hear some strong language in the background of Nick's film. We've got to walk them together and we've got to work together to make this work. It's like anything. You have a go for it or you get left behind. We're all in the same boat, we're all in the same pot. We now move forward. We're not leave and remain, we are leave. United Kingdom. No, we'll leave. We we'll are left. leaving, we've left. but we've got to remember that a large percentage of this country voted remain. Sorry. And we don't feel that Sorry. way. Look at me and look, mate, he's remain. I'm, I'm out of honour, yeah? I mean, you're falling out. No. no. It might be in ten minutes, <laughs> like, but, you know. <laughs> This time we'll just carry on, as it, as it were. We just want people to know that you, England is not an easy touch. Well, you know what I mean? You can't just come here and tech, tech, tech. To enjoy the advantages of this country, you've got to contribute. It's as simple as that. Why do you think Burnley voted to leave? They're tired of paying out for people who think it's a career option to just be a dosser and get a council house and just tech, tech, tech. And we're getting sick of this, you know. We're, we're, you look around, every one of us here are hard-working men. And that's what we're sick of. Paisley! I actually voted in last week. Um, the reason was because um, I just feel that Britain has a massive role to play in the European Union. And uh, it doesn't make sense to me for us to come out of that. I'm second generation Italian, so my mum and dad came over here. But I think the biggest thing uh, is that I was born here, but all my friends that are around here in Burnley have no issue whatsoever with any, any foreign uh, people coming to this country because as long as the foreign people that come here contribute, I think that's the main thing. And the biggest thing, the biggest gripe that this country has is any foreign people that come over here and just grab from the state. And I think that's the biggest issue. Did, did, you, did you vote leave the referendum, Pat? He's, he's, he's not playing. I did, yeah, definitely. You know why? I voted because I want to say all the laws that are made. I voted leave, which the majority of people around here did. I'm not sure if it were the right thing or the wrong thing. We'll soon find out. People making the laws now that we don't even vote over. No, that's right. That, that, that's, that's my biggest gripe. You could definitely say that we've seen a decline in our living standards, especially in the northwest, the north of England. I mean, I have family who live down south, like Basingstoke, and you go down there, and it's like a different country. So we talk about like how it's what's happened down south compared to what's happened in northwest, but if you think about it, 
We, we now have a say over where that money goes and I'd say to anyone who's annoyed about this referendum, annoyed that we've voted to leave and they wanted to remain, get involved in politics right now because at this moment in time it's the biggest change you can make. I'd say that if there's going to be any left wing ever again, they've got to realise that they're not the super intelligent people that they think they are and they have to respect the voice of uh, uh, normal working people and we're not stupid. I see the pros and the cons, but either way, to be honest with you, I think, either way, putting it bluntly, we're going to get screwed either way. And joining me now is the novelist Kasuo Ishiguro, the Japanese-born, raised in Surrey, and as the author of The Remains of the Day, the man responsible for a lyrical evocation of interwar England, so powerful and convincing that it won the Booker Prize and was made into a famous film. Uh, Kasuo, I mentioned these three parts of your past because they, they paint you in a way as a sort of literary poster boy for multicultural Britain and, and full integration, and yet... You write in today's Financial Times of, of your fears that that sort of Britain may be in some sort of mortal threat. Why? Mortal threat might be putting it a little melodramatically, but I think this is very serious. You know, in, in, my, in my whole lifetime here, I've, I don't think I've felt this anxious. I mean, the, the nation is very bitterly divided, it's leaderless, it's very anxious. Um, if, I, if I was a strategist for the far right now, I would be getting very excited. You know, this, a, this is probably the best opportunity since the 1930s to push Britain towards some sort of neo-Nazi racism. Um, and I think we've got to... I mean, all the decent people in this country, and I mean both people on both sides of the referendum divide, have got to rally around some sort of decent heart of Britain and I think that decent heart I don't doubt that decent heart you know I not even a little I, grim, grim after, this week. I was I was I was shaken uh, you know I, I was a firm remain person you know and I was shaken like a lot of people uh, but in the end I you know I have a I have a faith uh, I mean, about the essential decency of of this country um, I, I speak both as somebody who grew up as, as the only visible foreigner at school. I was always the only foreign boy at school, only foreign kid in the community. Over the years I've lived in various parts of Britain when l very large numbers of immigrants came from the Caribbean, Africa, Asian subcontinent um, during a time of enormous economic turmoil in, in the 70s and the 80s. People like the National Front, the BNP have never gained a hold in this country. You know, I think and just as it was in the first half of the 20th century. And basically, I know, I, mean, I can tell from my perspective, mm. everything I know about this country is that it is essentially a very decent, tolerant country. Uh, it it um, does um, racism really badly, even, even worse than football. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> they just don't the do, I mean, well. and when fascism was rampaging across Europe in, in, in the first half of the 20th century, it, it couldn't get a foothold here. Um, but I think this is, we shouldn't be complacent now. And I, I think the country does need to, the decent part of the country needs something to rally around. Well, that, no. let's try and identify what that may be. But of course, there'll be plenty of people watching this, as you well know, and as you refer to in your piece, who voted to leave the European Union and uh, are, are, would be just as chilled by the spectre that you portray as anybody else on the Remain side is. It, it, it's, it's a challenge to really separate, isn't it, the, the, the toxicity that seems to have been emboldened by the result and the people who will be just as alarmed by that emboldening as... as, as anybody else is. How, how, how can we do that? I, I absolutely believe that the that, you know, majority of the people who voted leave are not racist. Of course. Yeah. Some are. Yeah. Uh, but you know, just, just at the local level, I would, like to see the, the, I would like to see some sort of campaign, declaration, um, petition. For, no, I can't do it. I'm, a, I'm from the Remain camp. So the people from the Leave camp, I would like them to clearly say that they're against the kind of xenophobia and racism that is have threatening to... Have you detected to, uh, any yourself? Have you, have you Not personally, any no, no, just, just reading... I mean, there are a lot of people who are very anxious, you know, and, and we've heard reports uh, of just, you know, things that uh, weren't acceptable before s seeming people to be acceptable. People to go home. I think, yes, uh, yes, exactly. It's at, that, that, it's at that level at the moment, you know. I 
I don't know how deep it goes, but I would like to see, see, see the people from the Leave camp just clearly uh, isolate the racists um, uh, you know, by saying, this isn't us. You know, I, I'd even offer them a, a slogan, you know, Leave Racism. You know, you know, hashtag whatever. Yes, you know, it needs let's a just, hashtag. Let's just, let's just try and win back the tone of this, of this thing. At a deeper level, at a deeper kind of mm. you know, thing, I, I, I'm one of the people who would like to see a second referendum, not a replay of the last one. But I think we, what we lack now is a proper mandate for the new Prime Minister, whoever it is, on what sort of Brexit we are going to go for. And I, th I think we need another, uh, some sort you, of you, discussion you've, you've, from you've, you've, you've pulled the pin on the sec second referendum, Grenade, just as our time together comes to an end. So we shall, we shall have to leave it there. Okay. Kasuo Ishiguro, many thanks. Thank indeed. you very much. Thank you.